Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yeshua Network. I'm Nathan Wheeler, and today we are doing the entire Bible read-through, Joshua, moving into Joshua, chapters 1 through 6. Really excited to be here, and really excited to have you folks with us, and thank you, everybody, who's been following along and going through the series with us. It has really been amazing, and the Lord has blessed it tremendously. My sidekick and partner here, the Ninja of Ninjas. Hi-ya! Where's your smoke bomb? <laughs> oh! Smoke bomb. Look, he disappeared. Amazing. <laughs> hey guys, Alex Lovovsky here, and it's great to be with you again. Wait, what's your name? What? Who? Oh my goodness, you've been lying to me this whole time. I thought your name was Michael. Okay. Michael. Hi guys, welcome. Really blessed why you guys are uh, tuning in and logging in and telling us where you're from and all that fun jazz. Uh, it's really exciting. Today's a 29th video. Can you believe that? 29 videos. It That's goes, awesome. It's kind of gone by fast, I feel, even though it's totally been like a long time. <laughs> For those of you watching pre-recorded, you're like, what is he talking about? They're all pre-recorded. All right, but we love you guys a lot. Yesterday was hashtag be the light where everybody's logging on. I just want to say thank you, everybody, who lit their candles and took their pictures. We had the most pictures posted yesterday of any hashtag be the light we've ever had. And it is so inspiring. And it, it really, you guys are, you, you go all out. People get their families together, couples, you know, people go on a location or out in front of their yard. It's, it's really awesome. So thank you guys very much for that as well. Um, hashtag be the light group page. If you don't know about that, head on over. All right. So you want to start with the, um, the general, is there, there's not really general questions? Um, not this time, huh? Not really this I, time. You guys are getting all pro. You're not even asking general there questions. Might, there might, like, we might come along with something that may have fit, but there's, right. they're all in the back. Now the you're thematics. changing your story. You're changing well, your story you know, we nothing hit me as a general this time Jeez, around. You see, guys? Everybody's getting the, the gist of I how know. this Bible, so Bible read-through rolls. That's what happens when you only have geniuses on your videos with you, you know? It's just, yeah, we're, we're thank God for you guys. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we don't know what we would do without you, let me That's tell you. That's true. Okay, you guys. Awesome. Awesome. Let's... let's should we? Let's dive in. Should we dive in or jump in? Which one should we do? Diving is more graceful. That's, it's not such a big splash. Yeah. Okay, let's dive in. Here Although we go. if I dove, it would be a tremendously ungraceful splash. Well, well me too. Okay, here we go, right? Here we go. All right, so... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What okay. happened? I, pr I pressed the wrong button for the thing. Oh, okay. Just, that was intentional. I just wanted to show you guys what eSword looks like real quick before we began. And now that you know, let's go ahead and start with Joshua 1. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> All right. Stephanie Lysica, Joshua 1, verse 5. No one will be able to stand against you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. What a wonderful God we have. But bam, ain't that the truth? Amen. We sure do. With an we F sure on the end. Truth. That's awesomeness. And with a TH too. It's that too. Well, it is that too. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. Rian Williams, Joshua 1. This whole first chapter speaks to me of God encouraging Joshua that God is going to be the leader, the source of victory and the source of Joshua's strength. God telling Joshua that his only role is to stay obedient, to listen to and do what God says. Here's a quick summary. God says, tell the people to do this. I'm going to do it all for you. I am with you. Be strong and courageous. I keep my promises. Be careful to obey the law. You do this by meditating on it and following it. If you do, I can and will bless you. Remember, I commanded you to be strong and courageous. Joshua then went and did what he was told, and the people of Israel listened and obeyed. Joshua and the people reflect the relationship Joshua had with God. Go ahead. To me, this is an example of how our relationship with Jesus is to reflect his relationship with his Father. Bam. Mike? Mic drop. Mic, mic droppy? Mic dropping, droppy. dropping the mic. Bo bam! Well, well pointed out, and uh, I'm glad that you did, Miss Williams, because uh, it is uh, very important to realize that God wants to do it for us. It is really important that I think a lot of believers don't understand, actually, that um, while we are to act, right, our, our participation in God's ability to bless us is to follow His commandments. And a lot of humans have the desire, right? We have the desire that we want to be the work of our salvation. We want to be the one who did the thing to accomplish the greatness. But God wants us to be his children, like a child in the backseat of the car, right? And the parents driving and the child gets to look out the window and just enjoy the splendor and the travel and the wonders, right? We don't have to worry about that guy just cut me off. Wait, where's my exit? We don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And if we would just like surrender, that is our participation in the blessing. 
And it's really hard sometimes for us to realize that. So these passages right here that you pointed out are actually passages that we should meditate on often. And, and even though as we move through these chapters, I would recommend everybody kind of copy and paste this, this chapter here, this, this uh, passage here, and remember it. Remember how God works and how he blesses us and how he wants us to obey him. Yeah. I mean, as we, um, <clears throat> as we walk in the world, as we grow up from being children, we're taught to be responsible, to do, to do diligently, to do constantly, to make plans, that no one will do it but you do it. Right. And you must do for you, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And if there's any snag along the way... It's your fault. It's your fault because <laughs> you didn't work hard enough. Mm -hmm. And here God is saying, I am not... This isn't about you working hard. This is be mindful of what I tell you to do, mm -hmm. and I will take care of the things that would be impossible for you otherwise, and I will bring you into a blessing greater than you can imagine, greater than you can ever achieve on your own. Damn. And, uh, Amen, huh? Amen. Whew. Hallelujah. But, you know, as we walk around, the entire world is going to tell us otherwise. Right. It's going to constantly point to you and say, what are you doing to make your life better? What are you buying to make your life better? That's, that, uh, that one comes at us every second of almost every day. What did you accomplish? Yeah. Okay, real quick testimony on this because I'm just, I'm just like, I have to testify. I spent most of my life, I started my first business when I was 17. I started, you know, a professional career in acting when I was like eight and it was all about my works. I always like, this is my dream, this is what I'm gonna do, and I spent hours and hours every day working towards a goal. And I could accomplish so much on my own efforts, but when God wants you to not do something, he can like pull the rug out from underneath you, like with a sneeze, you know, hoot you, and then like your whole world is ruined. But when the Lord wants something for you, when he has a blessing in store for you, I can testify that for me, it's a much better blessing than the one I dreamed for myself. And it's so awesome when you actually do wake up, you know, almost like every day and you see that it's coming at you instead of you chasing it. Right? Yep. That's, I, I just have to testify of that because that has, that has happened to me ever since my, my near death experience, right? Where I was fighting God and I was fighting to have things my way and to do things my way. And basically th this passage, you know, Joshua 1 talking about how we are to submit to God and follow his commandments and let him be the blessing in our leader I gotta tell you it's better than any human thing I could imagine it's it really is like a nine day difference and I feel better in my soul and like my joy is there even uh, on a day where like nothing seems to be happening how often do we say God if you're with me then you will bless me according to my design Right. How often do we say that in our life? Where and then you? when the blessing doesn't come according to our design, we figure God is not with us. Right. Where are you? Why'd you why'd you let this fall apart? I was so close. And he's like, Well, did you think that maybe for a moment I had something better in store? Yeah. And you're thinking to yourself, what could possibly be better than this? I had one number and I won the lottery. Why would you stop me from winning the lottery? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Okay, man, it only happened to me. But listen. No, seriously though. <laughs> that's just how it is. I just want to testify that that submitting to the Lord is a scary thing. It like genuinely is a scary thing. Anybody who says otherwise, they're just far more brave than me. I was going to say they're lying, but they're probably just more brave than me. Well, but I, it's scary to me. Well, what is one commandment about submitting to the Lord? Be brave and courageous. Right. That's God, it. you're so It's the only thing God. he says to do. Be brave and courageous and go ahead and leap because I got you. He's so it's really hard though. No, but it's hard. Hey, it's hard. It is. It that's is why the hardest he tells thing. Him. That's why he tells them. Hey, when you get to the river, when you get to this river, it's going to it's going to pull back and yeah. it's going to dry up. Like you got that's you're like, okay, cuz Joshua wasn't there for the crossing of the Red Sea. He was. Joshua was? Uh, no, he wasn't. Yeah, he was. No, he wasn't. He couldn't he was be. one of the he was one of the 12 spies that went no. to Canaan and then was No, from Exodus, buddy. Yeah, from Exodus. There's no way he could have been. Cuz he, he was one of the he was one of the young men Joshua, son of Nun, was one of the young men sent. It was him and Caleb that that said, "We can go to his, we can go to this promised land. The Lord's got us." And the other ten said, "Oh no, they got big scary people." No, you're not understanding me. What? I'm saying he wasn't in Egypt, bro. He wasn't born yet. He wasn't in Egypt. Remember the Bible. He God said, "None of you shall enter in, including Except Joshua Moses. and Caleb." Oh man, is he correcting me? He's getting me good, huh? <laughs> no, it's, I'm not. I, he was young. <clears throat> he was certainly young, but he, he, he may have seen the parting of the sea. 
Really? Yeah. All right. Well, never mind. But I mean, he still no, had to. See, you're right. You're right. He still had to see God it's, do it for him. Oh I hope you guys are entertained. This is how we do it. See, this is why Bible fellowship is so much more interesting, isn't it? When was the last time? <laughs> You guys should see us off camera. It's hilarious. In <laughs> no. fact, we actually have thought about recording our read through ourselves when we're reading it together and showing it to you guys because we think they're hilarious. Yeah. We, we thought about it. Let us know if you might be interested in seeing that nonsense. Okay, getting back, getting back. Sorry. We have too much fun with this, you guys. We know it's an important thing. We got to yeah. stay focused. I apologize. No, no. I'm like a child here. Whenever I get around Good God's thing. word, I become childlike. You got to forgive me. Amen. Okay. Man. Nora. Uh, if I'm the adult, no, you're reading. You're no, the if, adult. If I'm the adult supervision, we're yeah. gonna crash. And we're burn. we're this in is trouble. Not, is that what you're trying trouble. to say? Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right, um, Nora Akan. I hope I got your name right. Um, Joshua one, one through six, is about how God chooses a leader. He appoints a leader and promises to stand by that leader. He guides and directs the footsteps of the leader to achieve what he has promised. But bam, I agree. How many times yeah. in the Bible does it say? over and over and over again yeah. about a particular leader, whether he be part of the good guys or the bad guys. Yes. Who do you think put him in his place? Exactly. So. And it's really awesome too that when the people try to go against the leader, God drops bombs on them. Yeah. Moses is like, oh, 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 oh you're the leaders now. Okay, yeah. let's see who's the leader when we wake up tomorrow morning. Yeah. You guys remember that passage? That was pretty fun. Not for them, but for Moses. <laughs> right, Moses was... Moses was like, this is going to be funny. This is, yeah. Nah, Sit ha, ha. back and watch the show. Huh? Exactly. Joshua um, was born in Egypt, son of new adopted. Thank you, Helen. I appreciate it. I, I, I was confused. It happens. Hold on. I hear voices. Wait, hold on. Son of noon adopted. He was adopted by noon? Is that what you're saying? See? That's interesting. See? See what? Was he adopted? I don't know. I don't remember that part. Um, but that's cool. If, uh, that's interesting if, if it's true. I'd love wow. to read up on that. Yeah, that's, that, we gotta look at that. means because because Joshua was part of the tribe of Ephraim, or Noon was part of the tri tribe of Ephraim. Prophets, yeah. And uh, oh, did I give that away? No. Well, was that was that? Uh, that that's in Genesis fifty or forty nine. It's good to reiterate. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't know if I gave away something there real quick. That's coming. Is it coming or going? Well, kind of. It's kind yeah, of. Explained. It's, kind of, it's explained. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Natalie, Are you guys confused yet? We're just having one of those days. Listen, I think I need more <laughs> coffee, and then I'll be fine. Uh, I'd like some coffee. Take two, and action. I don't have any coffee. No, nobody provided me coffee. Would okay. you like some? No. Oh, I'm, ju I'm just being, I'm just being a just diva. Guilt I'm just being a diva. Okay. okay. Natalie Dor Dory, um, Joshua 1, uh, verse 9. Is it just me, or does anyone else notice how amazingly kind and loving and encouraging and uplifting God is with Joshua? even promising him blessings like he did to Moses. I mean, moment to celebrate how awesome God is. Bam. When God, Jehovah, uh, WTV, whatever oh, whatever you want to call oh. it, appoints someone and or gives someone a task that one cannot fail for God, is that one cannot fail for God is working through them with them. Maybe I missed the point, but anyway, God is awesome. No, you did okay. not miss the point. I think you found the point. You hit the point. I think you, you picked the up the point and you ran with it, which is awesome. Yep. Hallelujah. Yep. Absolutely. Hallelujah. <clears throat> uh, Rian Williams, Joshua 1, uh, verse 17, 18. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Mm -hmm. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. I love now, I love how what the people said to Moses perfectly fits the promise God had already given to Moses in verse 5. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. He must have known what they would say or caused them to say it in this way as a double confirmation. Yeah, amen. I think, didn't Moses say that God will be, didn't he tell the people that God be with Joshua is, is with me? Was yes, that he a, did. Yeah, so that might be why they said he it. He did. Um, I remembered something at least. You remember everything. It's just, that's why you have me here. I'm, I'm the, I'm the uh, artificial intelligence. Perfect. Cyborg. Okay. Um, Interesting. I have to look into this right here. Okay. Joshua was adopted by Aaron. We have to look into this. We do have to look into this. My mind is melting. Yeah, you're. I bringing, don't. You're bringing, I don't remember Joshua being adopted. If you have passages, here. Helen, I believe you, but I want to, if you have passages, because I'm, I'm, I'm like, how did I miss this? 
That'd be awesome. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, that was cool. That would be cool. Marianne Meston, I love the way the father I love the way father encourages Joshua who is young, now leading the people after Moses has passed on. Big shoes to fill. A little bit. He even told Moses several times in Deuteronomy to encourage Joshua. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Um, only be strong and very courageous. Do not be afraid, for the Lord your God is with you wherever we go. Amen. Just do all that I tell you. Meditate <laughs> on the book of the law. Do according to all that is written. Then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. I believe the same applies to us today Amen. as children. Yeah. Meditate on his word and do as the Ruach HaKodesh guides and leads us. Ruach HaKodesh is the Holy Spirit in yeah. Hebrew. Just in case you guys don't know. Just in case. Um, so about the <laughs> youth of Joshua, I believe he was at least 60 years old at this time. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he had to have been because he was he had to have been, back he, in the day when everything was going south. Yeah, so he has to be around 60 anyway. Yeah, so he's not a young man. And he was with Moses throughout. the. the he was like Moses' right-hand guy throughout a lot of... Uh, so he would, have been, he would have been in Egypt if he's about 60 because they were in the desert for 40 years. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how I'm gathering. Oh, okay. He saw the promised land with the other 12 young right. young men and, yeah. Oh, which was early on. Yeah, I he see. sent out yes. the spies before the 40-year curse. Yes, 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 that's yes, 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 thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he was. My, I'm, I, <clears throat> listen, when you get old like me, you guys, look at me, I'm old, okay? Memory goes first. This is why I always say... Read the Bible for yourself, because Nate doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is a mistake. You just read. Okay. Um, Joshua 2, we're in 2. Uh, vice versa. Wait, what was that? What? What did you just say? Joshua, Joshua 2, we're in 2. Oh, we're in 2. Yeah, what did I say? I don't know. I thought it was another word. Did in you hear me word. say I'm wearing a tutu? Right? Yeah, that's exactly that's actually what I did here. That's, that's so funny. We all hear I'm what we want to hear. Yeah, that's okay. true. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bummer. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Okay. Take right. 3. Take 74. <laughs> yeah. Vice versa, Joshua 2 1. Is this verse implying that the two spies went into Rehab's. Oh, Rahab. Rahab. Rahab's. Rahab. Rahab. Sorry. Try. Right. Take four. It says Rehab, but we know what it what, what well, she Rahab. means. Um, oh, yeah. Into Rahab's house to mm -hmm. get some. Oh. I asked that because I checked the definition of lodged in the verse and I saw it may have meant that they had a sexual relationship. Oh. I don't think they had a sexual relationship with him. Mm. God strictly said don't have sexual relationships. Now, they didn't always obey it. But I have a feeling at this point, they were probably pretty much on high alert of behaving. Yeah. Yeah. For them to have Relations. gone in to spy and then s s d basically like, broke a c break a commandment at that point. Like Whatever. a heavy one that he killed some for. Like yeah. it wasn't like a, like a light one where he's like, okay, go get a goat and... You know, sacrifice it. It was like if you did this kind of thing, he he was killing him for that kind of stuff. I I, I don't know. I, I'd have to look into it. I personally don't think that that was the case because they were kind of on like a holy mission, and it'd kind of be awkward. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. I mean, plus I, mean, I think I think one of the reasons why she might have helped them is because they didn't they want didn't to do anything do with that. Her. And I mean. I, yeah, it didn't explicitly say that they went and had sexual relations with them. Yeah. But usually the Bible would say that if that was the case. Yeah, they would say they went into her or that yeah. they had relations or that they knew her. Those yeah. are the, Usually those are the terms that the Bible uses for actual, like, having sex is, and they knew her. That's yeah. how they word it. So, yeah. I'm going to sneeze. Which must be true what we're saying. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, the well, Lord. if I... Okay, continue. Sorry. Well, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say the Lord is confirming that they did not sleep with her. Okay. Uh, Helen Nakajubi. Um, uh, hi, Nathan and Alex. Hopefully you'll be there too. I'm here. Uh, can you please explain Josh to where I am? I am okay. in the flesh. Can you please explain Josh to where Rahab has the two spies from, from the king of Jericho and even lied about their... Hides the two spies from the king of Jericho and even lied about their whereabout, then advised them how to escape, makes a pact with them so to save her family when they come back. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to lie as long as it is for a good cause, like saving someone? Also, I noticed Rahab was a Gentile, yet she is in the lineage of Yeshua, of Jesus, according to Matthew 1.5. Yaz. So, I don't know if it's the same Rahab. Rahab. Yeah, we don't I know. don't know if it's the same Rahab, or however you want to say her name. Although, in most teachings, they do teach that, sh that the Rahab they mention is this woman here. But we would have to look at that, and we'd have to double check. Uh, we'd have to see if there's any text that's coming up or anything. First, let's answer question number one. 
is it okay to lie if it's for a good cause and to save somebody? I'm not going to answer this question directly right now. It's one of those things that I'm gonna tell you to put in your pocket and see if God, so you have to understand something. The reason why we can't say indefinitely in this passage if it's okay to lie in order to save somebody or in order to do a good thing is because Rahab is not a follower of Yeshua or a follower of the, of the commandments here. She is a, 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 basically a Gentile that's in her own, she's doing her own thing. But yes, she is doing a good thing, but why would God smite her while she's blessing his people? There is a commandment in the Bible that says, if somebody blesses you, I will bless them. If somebody shows grace on you, I will show grace on them. So we can't say based on this particular passage that lying is okay for uh, a good cause. But I do want you guys to think about this as we move forward. Are there times in the Bible where God himself tells somebody to be deceiving or to lie for the betterment of the people? Put that in your pocket and let's see as we move forward. Yeah. And then that would answer your question. But I don't think that even like as a scholar or a biblical, uh, you know, study, you can't go by this passage because Rahab is not within the law and is, is not of the law at this time. Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? And she is doing something that her king would never allow, which is survive this, right? right? The Jericho was ad going to be adamantly resistant. And uh, one of the things that the Israelites are told is if they don't resist you and if they surrender then they can live and they can have their own city within your walls and they'll have to pay you a tax and, right. and leave them alone don't kill them but if they do resist you destroy them so she's this is self-preservation and preservation for her own family she knows everybody's heard by this time and she says so yeah that your God will will smite us he will kick our butts to so, no end to no end we know we've heard of all the miracles so i want to be on your side <laughs> isn't that kind of cool when you think about that too that the whole world at that time what was the whole world had heard about all these miraculous things that god was doing with these people i mean how how amazingly awesome is that i yeah. love i love that part of it yeah it's not like a, a sentence that really wow. is, is really understood i just got something oh what you get is so it contagious? The, it is. Oh, geez. Here we go. Uh, the 40 years in the desert Word. is what made that possible. Right. While they, while they were meandering about for 40 years, right. word spread about all the miracles. Had they gone straight from, from parting the Red Sea into the Promised Land, it is possible that the other nations may not have yet heard of the miracles that God had, that God had done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, just a thought. No. Yeah, it makes sense. Just a thought. Because the more they, the more they weren't, if they had just gone straight into the promised land, they would have only affected like maybe those people. But yeah. the fact that they kind of wandered around and kind of touched yeah. every little group of people. Yeah, and word traveled from Egypt, what happened to the Egyptians. Right, and at the time, Egypt was actually the main, the main yeah. city and country of the world for export-import. So exactly. every country was dealing with them. Yeah. And so they would have probably arrived and been like, hey, I noticed like half your population is <laughs> gone. And everything is... Like really bad. Yeah, everything got all junked up. Like what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing. That is really amazing. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So even that was in, in his design. All part of the plan. Wow. Word. Wow. He's a good God. Wow. Amen. Continue. Joshua 2.18. All right. Oh, wait, uh, is this the same? Yeah, no. Continue. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, Rianne. Uh, Rianne Williams, Joshua 2.18. Um, the spy speaking to Rahab, This oath you have made us swear will not be binding unless you have tied the scarlet cord on the window. And this reminds me of the blood God told the Israelites to place on their doors in Egypt. Rahab declared that the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. And she received mercy like, mercy like no other in Jericho. Yeah, that's right. She was basically a convert. Think about it. She was, she, a was a, she was a convert. Yeah. And Irina KD actually has a good point. She says, but I don't think he planned that. 40 years of walking was as a pay, uh, pay for their misbehavior. That's true. So to be more accurate, what God took for the, as the Bible says, what God takes for the devil's, you know, intent to demise you and destroy you, he used as a blessing. So in a way, the 40 years gave God more time to spread his his power and authority into all the other parts of the world. But you're right. I think obviously he preferred them to walk right in. But 
we all know that God being sovereign and all-knowing, he knew what was going to happen. So he used it. And we'll get to we'll get to more of that too. For instance, uh, that's going to continue. Oh yeah, I mean, that happens be, all the time. There's going to be stuff later on where that's going to be even more apparent than in this particular example. Well, good. The, one of the best examples of that is actually, uh, uh, wow, why am I? Jonah. Jonah is a perfect example of that. So yeah, very good, very good comment there, Irina. We we do want to be clear on that. Very very good. All right, sorry. Continue. Well, now we'll get back to addressing uh, Joshua two eighteen. You know, sorry, we're not combining that last year. I tried to scroll that course on that. Yeah, so... I do like the, the symbolic of yeah. the scarlet cord. I do think that that is symbolic. It's like Yeshua himself extends his blood to us. And by his blood, we are able to climb out of the mess of life and uh, get out of the sin. Yeah. And also, without the blood being on the cross, he would have never a sin, atoned for all sin, which allowed us to have the Holy Ghost. And if you think about it, when we get the Holy Ghost, that's how we raise up hmm. above all this earthly nonsense. Mm. So there is, there's a really good symbolism there. Yep. Good one, Williams. Very good. Um, uh, Phanus Prins Lu Joshua 2, 18 and 21. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou hast let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. When somebody was crucified, they didn't bleed much except Yeshua when they pierced his side and his blood run down. Symbolic of the scarlet line running down, our salvation is available. Yaz. Verse 21. And she said, according unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet line in the window. It is our choice to ask for salvation by blood of Yeshua. Yeah. Well, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's up to us to to submit to that and receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You guys are amazing. I don't care what Alex says about you. I think you guys are great. What you, what? <laughs> <laughs> always, he always comes up with. I'm these. a jokester. I'm a jokester. He, just, he loves do. to watch me squirm. Okay, Lisa, Lisa Villa Villa Longo. He makes all things work for my good. Thank you. That's what I meant. That's what we were. That's, that's what we're getting that's at about the forty years. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Uh, okay. It's so funny. Do you think they have any idea that we both like woke up today with like foggy minds? Do you think they can tell? We both woke up today and like for some reason we had horrible night sleep and we both like my brain is mush and we're like in a cloud. I mean, Alex is obviously sharper than me. That's why I have to drink the coffee. But my point is, is that if you guys have to forgive us on this video already. This is like a precursor for the rest of the video. We just... Just know we're having one of those days, both of us. It's super weird. So we're just, we'll we're, just laugh, we're just, we're just. Are well, you blessed now? You're okay. No, 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 mind no, is clear? Uh, no, no. I would never, I would never claim clarity. <laughs> but what I am saying is, so far, so good. Uh, not, not we me. don't, you know, the clarity is really coming from saying, the comments. That's thank what the I'm Lord. saying. I'm saying it's up. Yes. they're they're doing the work. Exactly. That's that is exa exactly the point. If you didn't get my point, which is part of my point, yeah. is you guys are the ones bringing it today. <laughs> yeah, and we're dragging behind okay. as usual. So yes, that's all I'm trying to point out. The glory, <laughs> the glory be to the Father through you guys today. That's what I'm trying to say. I got you. Hallelujah. I Hallelujah. agree with that 100. percent Okay. There we go. Um, <laughs> Rian Williams, Joshua three, verse seven. Um, and the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will exalt you in the eyes of all Israel. Hallelujah. God exalted Joshua. He didn't prove himself. He was simply he didn't prove himself. He Amen. was simply obedient to God. Amen. I so often think I can't do what God is asking unless people have respect for me. But when I try to prove my own worth instead of focusing on God, I'm not trusting him the way Israel demonstrate their trust of God in this chapter. God said to them, you're going to cross the huge river, and they just got ready and set out. They couldn't see how, but they trusted and acted. Yeah. You see, that's what I'm talking about. They were just like, we're going to walk across the river? Really? And they, they are, you, as you said, there's only two that did get to see the parting of the Red Sea at this point. Maybe, maybe, well, some of the women might have to as well. Oh, that's true. Because he didn't smite them, but... Right. Men are the ones who get smited the most. Yeah, but, but suffice <laughs> it to say that most of the men had not seen it. Right. And they would be the ones Having most to have a leap likely, of faith here. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, actually, let's, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. Let's pause that for a moment. Okay. I mean, let's focus on that for a moment. Can you imagine 
close to three million people trusting in one dude who says, God said that we will cross the river, follow me, bring the ark, you know, gives them the instructions. And everybody just kind of follows along. I mean, imagine the power of that and the majesty of that. Am I the only one? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was reading a comment that just didn't make any sense. Continue. Oh. Re say, say what you said. I'm sorry. Uh, what? Were you reading? No, don't, don't read it. You don't read it because then you'll get distracted. All I was saying is just imagine this scene. With the, with the guys. Three million people listening to one guy who says, God said, let's go to the river, bring the ark, put in the thing, the thing will go, the, the river Carry will stop. Carry all your tents, bring all your animals. Yeah, and, and like, they just go and do it. That's true. I mean, that the faith, the power of all of that is so intensely awesome. It is. And uh, You think you could do that today with any group of people? That's the, the yeah, like, could you? That's the question. Yeah, exactly guys, right. I want you to get your cars, and I want you to get all your stuff, and we're going to walk to Hawaii from California. Like, who would show up for that? Nobody. Yeah. Like, nobody would be like, yeah, I'm totally believing that we're going to be able to walk to Hawaii. And, and, and in fact, Joshua had not yet done anything miraculous, or nothing miraculous had, be done, had been done on behalf of Joshua. I guess other than the fact that Joshua was with Moses. And, and Moses, like, gave him Moses, a thumbs up. Yeah, so they kind of knew Joshua was the next Moses. So, yeah. Okay, so there was, some, there was some reason to believe that Joshua would be able to do this. Yeah. Or he's, well... I think the fact that they were just like, well, this guy Moses said, and therefore, you know, yeah. if Moses said. So far, everything that Moses said, whether they liked it or not, it kind of happened. So, not happened, kind of, it did. I'm not going to talk the rest of the video. I just want you to know, I'm going to sleep. You, you are good. You, you got this. Go ahead. Oh, this is going to go so My words aren't even coming out in order, Alex. They're not even coming out in order. You know, I understand them. Order out my words. Um, what are you? I'm just. You're pressing buttons. I'm pressing buttons and go to the next question. Cause okay. Because that's pretty cool. Okay. That's pretty cool what uh, Rihanna is saying. Amen. They just got together and went. Okay. True. Uh, Very good point. Uh, Rihanna Williams, Joshua 3, Crossing the River. This whole chapter looks like baptism. Oh! Ah! That's there another it is. mic drop. That's a mic drop. Yes, it is baptism. It is symbolic of the baptism. Yes. I love how the presence of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant, went before them through the River Jordan. And the Ark of the Covenant is the Spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The power and authority of the Spirit of the Lord. And Yeshua is the New Covenant, the power and authority of the Lord. Bam. Bam. Well, thank you. See? God, I had to spell that one out. You did, because now, I'm, now I'm trying to reorder your words, and I don't know where I'm going. You don't okay. know what order to put them in. True, <laughs> true story. This is a true thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Helen uh, Nakajubi, uh, in Joshua 3, I'm amazed how, go how God fulfilled his promise of being with Joshua as he was with Moses. Reference Exodus 21, verse 2, by pushing back the Red Sea. Now, I want to just chime in, and hopefully these words will come out in order. <laughs> it is really important to actually see how many times that in order for God's people to receive the blessing... And the and the and the full kind of a, a, a promise of God, they have to go through water. This will not be the last time we see this, and we have to pay attention to this because if God does something repetitive times, especially more than two times, it has extra importance for us to pay attention to it. We will see the parting of water. We will see people going through water in order to get into a new realm or a new place or a new a new blessing that the Lord has in store for us. So when we get to the baptism in the New Testament, it will be something that really in a way will almost have been like beaten into our minds. Pay attention to the water. Pay attention to the water. So something to, to keep in mind for sure as we continue to read. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Just saying. I agree. Uh, the baptism is, 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 is more than just dip him in the water for the sake of this ceremony. Yeah. It's literally connected to every other story in ever. the Bible. Ever. Anytime God goes to bless people. When, By the way, where did the first water baptism happen? The flood. Oh, snap! Flood. Red Sea. Who was saved Jordan. by the waters of the flood? Noah. My, my great grandfather. Just saying. Great. Well, all of our great, great. great well, I know. know. That was the joke. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. I have to explain my jokes. Uh, you know, oh I'm a little thick. You, you... He's everybody's grandfather. You're right. You're right. Oh, okay. This is true. Okay. All right. Uh, Joshua 4, Angela Turner Anderson. In chapter 4, verse 5 through 7, 12 stones were removed from the river to create a memorial of the river being cut off by the Ark of the Covenant. In chapter 4, verse 9, what is the significance of putting 12 rocks back into the River Jordan where the priests had been standing while holding the Ark? Oh, they didn't put the rocks in the river. They took the rocks from the river and put it at a place called uh, Gil Gilili? Gilliam? Gilliam? Or something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's Gilly something. And, uh, and they put the rocks there, and they're still there to this day, actually. You can go and see them. Pretty cool. Yep. They are, yeah, and that's going to be cool. They Next actually record. have shells on them, too, which is awesome. Irina KD is saying something cool. Oh. So that means that when we get baptized, we enter his given land. Booyah. And, and blessings and protection and anointing and all of the above. Yes. You enter, you, you enter the promised land when you're baptized. Nail on head. Yes. Awesome. Bam. Um, you know, I just, real quick, as an aside, first time I read uh, Exodus after, after my own baptism, I realized immediately how much the Exodus story is exactly alike to the Gospels in the New Testament. Yeah. And how much they parallel one another and how basically God is saving the Jews and bringing them into the promise. Yeah. And uh, the same is true of God saving us all and bringing us into the promise now. Hallelujah. So, Amen, buddy. Yeah. Um, Rianne Williams, Joshua 4, verse 6. Referring to the rocks God told them to take from the Jordan, to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, what did these stones mean? Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see God specifically tell Israel to commemorate his acts on their behalf. So, so to, to serve as a reminder and as a prompt for sharing testimony. He does this a lot. Testimony is to be retold. Yep. And here's another little thing. I don't know if any did it because we're getting on to the, let's see. Hold on. I just want to see if anybody says it first. I don't want to take anybody's moment from them. Hold on a second. Okay. It's Gilgal, not Gilliam or whatever Gilgal. it is I said. Yeah, yeah, Gilgal, correct. Gilgal. Okay, so there's one other thing too. There was another time where God told them to make a, a mound of rocks. And he said, place the rocks in this place as a monument to remember me. And it shall be a, a thing for other generations to see as well. This isn't the first time that he used the monument of rocks either. So we're going to see this monument of rocks also as we see this water thing it plays another role right there are rocks that god says put rocks here and i will put my spirit here i will i will be at this place and it will be a reminder so also realize that you know when they came from exodus they crossed over one of the very first things he told them to do was to build a monument of rocks. And he said, you don't get to put the rocks how you want to put them though. You have to put them where I tell you to do and then like make stairs this way. Remember that? Mm -hmm. so, so keep in mind now that this is again, there's a repetition here. Again, he's telling the people set rocks as a monument. So again, put that in your, in your pocket and be aware of that as we move forward as well. Because both of these oh. things. Can I say this now? Did you just get it? Well, I got something. Okay. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. 12 rocks. Well, hold on. That's 12 rocks. Yeah. 12 apostles. Yeah. On this rock I shall build 12. The apostles are rocks. Are well, the 12 see. rocks are witnesses to miracles? Yeah. And the 12 apostles are witnesses to his miracles. I don't know. Just, Just throwing keep, it out there. There's there's even more to it. There's keep it more. keep it in the pocket. That's all I'm saying. You're going to see these rock this rock thing and Lord putting his his memorial on the on the rocks or where the rocks are, you're gonna see this in the future. So just just keep it in your pocket. That's all I'm saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um where were we? I'm gonna yeah. have to go through the videos and do all the gems that we put in pockets. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a long thing. Oh my god. I gotta goodness start writing gracious. these down so it doesn't they don't get skipped. Okay. Continue. It's a lot of gems. I know. We're right. We got a lot of gems. We got a lot of treasure. We're only on video 29, Joshua 6, the book of the Bible, and we got so many gems that we're collecting. Hallelujah. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. 12 tribes, 12 apostles. That's right. 
Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Helen uh, Nakajubi, uh, Joshua 4 9. Are those 12 stones proven to be there in the River Jordan to this day? And the answer is yes. We, we looked it up on Google. Yeah, and there's 12, st or there's 12 stones there, and they have, they have uh, shells on them. Yeah. Like literally, like in them. And you can see the shells and fossilized on them. And like it's different than the other stones in that area. Um, and they're right next to the camps that they made, which are in the shape of feet, by the way. And we'll get into that later as well. But uh, yeah, if you, if you do Google it, you'll find it. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. The rocks are still there. How cool is that, you guys? Isn't that crazy that you could literally go there and you could like touch the rock that they touched? That you could like put your hand on the very stone they pulled out of the river. I yep. love that stuff. I love history. I've been to Jerusalem. It blew my mind. It's amazing. So, if you guys Wasn't have a chance Jesus to go, was Jesus baptized in the Jordan, Moldana? Yes. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Uh -huh. As you see, this is all pulling together. So it's wonderfully. It's all pulling together. Vice versa wants to know what I'm on. I believe I am on this uh, this weird rock we call the planet Earth. She's on a roll. I'm gonna roll. All right, I'm da bomb. Ba bomb. I'm exploding. Okay. You are. Ooh. Um. Fanus. Fanus. Fanus brings Lu Joshua four ten and the people hasted and passed. I'm just wondering, why is it specifically mentioned that they were the warriors, hastened? Was it because they didn't trust God and were worried the same could happen to them as what happened to the Egyptians, or because the new land Jehovah promised? Or was it part of the battle plan? I would think the latter. I think well, it was just so that they would pay their dues. Yeah, so they would be in the front. Yeah, just yeah, that they would like they promised. It, to be. Yeah, exactly. It's it have it, they were fulfilling promise yeah. in a way. It was another controlled folly, in a way. But it was probably very also symbolic because you have to realize too that the people inside Jericho were probably there was probably like a wall walk like most of them had right. They could they had like places where they could go on the wall and look out yeah and if they saw soldiers leading they're thinking every moment they're gonna get attacked right so if it was like a bunch of people like you know with flowers in their hair and you know dancing they'd probably be like dude let's take them now <laughs> it's a procession of shoot the arrows at them while they're dancing you know <laughs> yeah I'm thinking that that was the reason both yeah. to fulfill pr promise and the prophecy and 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 to for Lord to bless them yeah. and to make sure that the people who were inside realized you're about to get a can opened up on you yeah they they did promise to go in front of every they promised to be the front lines those those particular guys yeah because they were from the tribes that were given land east of the Jordan they didn't have to go right they yeah. did, but they promised that if you give us the land east of the Jordan the warriors we will all go first and fight right and Kara is asking, where, when are we going to Israel as a group ministry? Oh. We are hopefully planning that. I think we looked at like late winter, early spring next year. Next year, 2020? Yeah. Wow. I didn't realize we looked that early. Come on. I would love that. That's our hope. Wouldn't well, that be we'll amazing, We'll see if we can guys? pull it off. How amazing would that be? That'd be amazing. I think we need to do it sooner than later, though, because, you know, it's just getting crazy over there. We should all group meet up in Israel. Oh, bam! So, so somebody's in agreement with us. You guys are all on board with this. Yeah, we're, so you guys want to go to Israel? That'd be so cool, right? Walk around so Israel. Cool. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So cool. I would recommend going in a group, by the way. I went by myself, and it was, uh, there were struggles. There were struggles going by yourself. It is, I, it's highly recommended you go with a group. So, man, that would be cool. Yeah, it'll be awesome. All right. Um, we'll pray about it. Pray about it. Mm -hmm. 2020. I want. I want to go. I want to go. If the Lord will it, may it be so. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua. Hamashiach. Amen. Our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Okay. Helen Nakajubi, Joshua 4:20 uh, uh, through 24. Are these 12 stones there in Gilgal, and does that place still go by the name as a memorial? Yes. Yes, the stones are there. I guess they would probably have a plaque. I would imagine they'd have a plaque, but who knows? There's well, they a lot have it of fenced off. Oh, they do? Yeah. Okay. Because there's a lot of biblical monuments uh, from all of this time that are just sort of left there to just be. So. Yeah, there's not like a plaque that says, what you're looking at. I don't know if there is there, but there's yeah. a lot of places that don't have a plaque. Yeah. And then there's a lot of places, too, where they say, this is the spot, and you're like... And it's not. It's not. Yeah. You're like, this, no. This yeah. doesn't even make sense. They're like, we're in New York. 
what are you talking about? This is the spot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Rian Williams, Joshua 4, uh, verse 24. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Amen. This reminds me of Exodus 20, verse 20. Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. Oh, bam! It's important to God that I fear him and thus obey him. Out of love, he does this. Yes. He even tells me that in fearing him, I need not be afraid. Wow, yes! Woo! You get to do it. Drop it. Drop and mic. Bo bam! Exactly. That's exactly right. Yes. See, you guys are so good at this. You guys are rocking. Rocking it. This is amazing. What this is like the best Bible read through ever. It really is. It really is. You, you guys, guys are like the, it. you guys are the best ever. Bestest. The bestest. The bestest. The bestest. The, be the bestest. Is, is, is. Okay. Okay. We're ridiculous. We're ridiculous. We're ridiculous. Is, is, and you're the bestest. Is, is. That's exactly right. Okay. Rian Williams. Oops. Sorry. Excuse me. I just pulled my mic. Um. Uh, Rian Williams, Joshua 5, verse 6 and 7. The Israelites had moved about in the desert for 40 years until all the men of military age, when they left Egypt, had died, mm -hmm. since they had not obeyed the Lord. For the Lord had sworn to them that they would not see the land that he had solemnly promised their fathers to give to us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So he raised up their sons in their place, and these were the ones Joshua circumcised. God gives us a calling and a blessing, but, not, but it is not a guarantee. It is up to me to remain obedient, to walk with God into that calling and blessing. If I don't, God will raise up another who will. His purpose is always completed. Bam! You are on fire! Fire! More mic drops. More, and yeah, that's another for sure. Is it? Oh, there's more to read. Oh, ba bam! When I hear of that lost generation, I think I understand some of what it is to fear the Lord. When I hear of the generation who entered the promised land, mm -hmm. I rejoice that God's word never returns void. Yes! Sorry, I get excited That's about awesome. this stuff. Oh, Isaiah 55, verse 10 through 11. So we're jumping ahead here, but it's probably... Throw it in there. I'm going to throw it in we're there. We're praising the Lord. We're good. As the rain and the snow came down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed... For the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out of my from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Dang. Don't you love that? You tie that passage right there with the passage that says, Though heaven and earth may fall away, my word will never cease. No matter what, if God says it, it is so. It don't matter what you do. You will end up in the belly of a fish or whale, depending on your take on that. You will do what the Lord says. The, the result he says will come forth is what I'm saying. That's right. Bam. Awesome. Lord is good. Awesome. Hallelujah. Irina KD, Joshua 5, verse 9. Uh, and the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from, from off you. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. And note, that, and note that the verse states that the reproach of Egypt is linked with the situation after Dina's death, revenge of her brothers. But why is that called of Egypt since the place that had happened, that, since a place that that had happened in was Canaan? Um, I know what you're talking about. There's a couple times that something is called Egypt. And I think that the word Egypt meant something to them that we may not have in translation. Because mm -hmm. that's not the first time they said a place was Egypt. We will actually see in the future other places called Egypt that isn't what we call today Egypt. So let me just, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to answer that right now because it's, there's really no, I can't really answer it except for to show you that that is the case later on. That I think that any time a place demonstrates the sin or the behavior of Egypt, they kind of maybe insultingly refer to it as an Egypt. Does that make sense? It does to me, and we will see later, I agree, we'll see later that, that certain things are going to be labeled Egypt mm -hmm. that maybe aren't called Egypt in the world, but right. they, they are Egypt in the spiritual sense. But, Correct. Um, can we look at this real quick? Uh, Tom says Egypt equals the world. Ah, well... 
That's one of the or yes. worldly, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Babylon yeah. too, though. There's also True. Babylon for that. Right. Can we look real quick at um, what Joshua? Joshua five nine, because Irina is talking about the note uh, of that verse. Let's take Links it again, Dina's or? death, and I, I didn't see it, so I'm curious. Five now. nine, and the Lord said unto Joshua, "This day yeah. have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgad unto this day." Wait. So wh where's, where's the, the note? The note is probably in a different um, process. It's in a di no, it's in a different pa you know pane or something. You got to open the notes. Well, what's oh you? Wait, let me. Let me see oh, the right. notes. Yeah, the notes. Oh, oh, oh. She's talking about on e sword. Yeah. Okay. Right. I, I, we assume you mean e sword. Are you talking about e sword notes? I thought you meant like somebody had written a note. Oh, in, that's why I got confused. I was oh, like, I, I don't got remember you. somebody writing a note. Well, let me let me take a look. Oh, it says where? Where is it? This one. Yeah, the note of that verse states that the reproach of Egypt is linked with the situation after Dina. Okay, okay, okay. Let's take a look at the note. Ooh, how do we get to notes? Oh, the verse. I don't even know how to use this thing. What am I doing? Hold on, guys. One second. Por favor. Um, if you... Where? Here. Let me see. This? Go ahead. Oh, is that it? One, these... one of those. Oh, I think I have to click it. Yeah, click on 5.9. Five, 5.9. Nine. Five, nine. And then... Uh, let me see. If you guys don't know how to use eSword, you're gonna do we're gonna do a little test really quick. Hopefully, oh, there you go. Can you guys see this? Hold on, let me let me go to the other screen and see if they can see this. Are you guys seeing that? Yeah, you are seeing that. Okay, okay. cool, perfect. So, evidently, the people of Canaan realized they were entering into conflict with God's Almighty. Okay, that's might be the other note. There's a note D and C and E as well. So I notes. Oh no. Journal topic. Those are notes you put in. I know. While you, or we put in while we study. I if we did. If I we think, did. Which yeah. We don't. So, uh, Irina, help us out here and what? I tell you where, what. Copy and paste it. Yeah. Paste the text of the note so that we can uh, check take, it out. Check it out because uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to know what what that is. What Dina has to do with this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Sorry about that, guys. We were, it, it was maybe a little uh, no. We're learning. This mesmerizing is, this how is we why kept we jumping screens. This. By the way, thanks for telling me about eSword, Brian. It is my pleasure. It's a great e tool. Sword, yeah, it's the greatest tool I've ever found. I don't know what I would do without it because I can't read the Bible. I can't read like the normal English at all. So I would lose my mind. I would have to literally learn Hebrew, like read it, know it, speak it, write it. That'd be pretty cool. God, that'd be so much work. I'm so lazy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> kidding, kidding. I am actually learning Hebrew at the moment, so that's are. why it was a joke. I am. I got Rosetta Stone. What? What? He learns the Hebrew. So if we do go to Israel, I can be like, yo, shalom. Other Sh Jewish words. Shalom. It's a good one. It's an important one. Got to start somewhere. I'll be like Baruch Hashem all day. That's all I know. Baruch Hashem. Um, I know okay. prayers and songs. That's it. That's all I know. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Irina KD, Joshua 5.9. We just did that one. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Faunus Prinzel, Joshua 5.13. In my home language, Afrikaans, captain is translated as chief commander. As an example, commander of the army forces. Uh, you're probably talking about the captain of the Lord's host, of the Lord's army. So yes, I see what he's getting at. Captain is translated that's, as that's chief when, commander. That's when the, the angel shows up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Rian Williams, Joshua 5, verse 13 through 14. How Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man. Joshua went up and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied. I did a study once that pointed out that this man's response showed that Israel were supposed to be on God's side, not their own. Oh! Joshua was snap. thinking about the situation from the wrong perspective. perspective. They wow. often, they, they, That's pretty deep. Us humans often do that. He should have been asking, "Are you on God's side?" Is that what you're? Yeah. Are, are you, you on are you on the are you of the God of Yahweh or are you uh, of like another God? Yeah. Yeah, but in his situation, it's understandable why right. he was asking the way he was. Because yeah. we have to be real careful. Alex and I have to be real careful. About right. What we're, we're not we're not it. judging what he said, but yeah, we'd yeah. all probably say the same thing. Right. But the point is, but you're right. It's a very it's a good point. Yeah. His response seems There's cryptic, but then it's not. But it's not. Yeah. I'm on the Lord's side. Yeah. 
whether that's with you, Joshua, or not is your choice. <laughs> right. You decide if you're with God or not. Are you on my side? It also shows that God's servants that know him as well as the angels do. Mm. They, they know exactly what to say. They don't, yeah. they don't put themselves into, a, mm -mm. into an oopsie. I know. I love it when they bow down and they go, get up. Don't do that. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah. They're like, what are you doing? Get up. Yeah. <laughs> don't well, bow to me. Yeah. Don't I, worship I, me. I serve the same guy you do. Yeah. Just knock mm -hmm. it off. Yeah. You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> and then what's interesting, just to tie that in, even though we're totally not at that part in the Bible right now, but I love it that they did the same thing to the apostles and the apostles had the same response. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Don't worship me. Don't bow down to me. Get up. Yeah. Don't get me in trouble. I love that. Wow. Okay, my tangent's done. Kind of makes you wonder how many of those types may have made the mistake of being worshipped. True. And where that took them. How many accidentally go, oh, let me, I like that. This, this kind of feels good. Yeah. I'm going to keep this. Anyway. Hmm. We're not going to jump into that, but, but mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying. Okay. Um... Irina KD Joshua 515 and the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua loose thy shoe from off thy foot for the place whereon thou standest is holy and Joshua did so same thing about taking off the sandals in the holy place was said to Moses Exodus 3 5 but not to Abraham or Jacob do you think it's because Jehovah was about to provide all the rules and the law to Moses and Joshua was the one to continue that therefore he was very particular with the rule only to them. Just curious. Hmm. Wait. It was said to Moses, but not... Yeah, Abraham and... Well, I think that the Lord was stating too that in this new relationship with people, he was saying that... that he. So remember too, to kind of go back a little bit here, the land was so tainted with death and sin and the blood... That the whole reason for the flood, people often get confused and think it was because of the people, but it wasn't. God specifically said, I had to flood the earth to clean the earth from man's sin. It was for the blessing of the earth and to get the earth right. Then, in the new, the new way that he's interacting with these folks and he's blessing them, after they walk through the water, they arrive to a place and he says, this place, I am I'm going to put my spirit and thus it is a holy place, so take your shoes off. And I think that that's the point, is that there's places in earth that, for lack of a better term, just to kind of allow people to wrap their minds around it, we might call it like a power spot, right? A place where God has anointed it, and therefore it is holy ground. Now here's what's cool on top of this, and to like solidify it, that if God says it is holy ground, it is holy ground. And so I think that the shoes thing also, you have to understand their shoes back then were gnarly. Now granted, not to say their feet weren't gnarly as well because they were mostly wearing sandals, but their shoes were very symbolically like with animal dung and other stuff on them. So I think that that's another thing too that if he was to bow down or to pray there, it would be kind of clean dirt. Just, just in an application, like a real day application of why would he say take your sandals off? Hmm. You get what I mean? The, yeah. On a more spiritual level too, and I'm kind of, you know, just throwing this out there. I think it is also interesting too that I can't, I think we'll get into it later, but have you ever had the sand in your toes at the beach or like a lake? And like you, you really kind of, it's almost like you kind of, you, you have a sensory of like the earth. Like you're touching God's creation with your feet. But like shoes kind of like separate us. Uh, weirdly enough, like if you take your shoes off and walk on actual dirt, it really, you, you become very aware of your steps. Where if you have shoes on, you're not aware of your steps because there's something that's kind of separating you from it. And spiritually speaking, I feel like that also might be one of the reasons why God would say, take your shoes off, this is a holy place, because he's saying, remove everything that separates you from the connection to me. Hmm. Sorry, I'm done. No, I, I agree. I also think that, you know, when we compare how God was with Abraham and, and Jacob to how he is now with the Israelites, I think that has more to do with what the people are asking of God. So mm -hmm. in the case of Abraham, he wanted a friend. He wanted God to know that he is an obedient, loving friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the case of Jacob, 
he was an obedient uh, select person looking for a blessing mm -hmm. and the Lord gave to them exactly what they had wanted and what they needed and what they needed for his will yes for the Israelites now yeah. they're a massive nation that requires a mighty king to lead them to victory right so the mighty king can't simply show up and go hey guys what are you doing let's have a picnic mm. no the mighty king is going to show up in glory and say don't even come near me with dirty shoes on right Tom actually has a great, Tom Dawson, because it was holy ground, God wanted Moses to take off the dead animal skin on his feet for there to be a oneness in relationship. So very much like what I was saying, but yeah, that's another good point to realize is that it was animal skin that they used for their sandals, right? Correct. There's another comment I don't want to miss. Uh, somebody had a really good comment that I wanted to go back to. Uh, where did it go? Hold on, hold on. Oh, come on, where did it go? Somebody had a really good comment. One second. Oh, this is it. Yeah, this is it. Tom, you have another great comment. I was told those stones were some pretty big stones. They are. I, from what we saw in the picture, they're big. It's not one man could not pick these things up. Meaning, when God wants you to do something that it's to glorify his name, he will give you the strength to do it. I love that. And there is going to be an example later on of somebody that has ridiculous superhuman strength. Right. So, yeah, it mm -hmm. is definitely a part of reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so I see. Oh, there's another question, too, about the ark. Why did people have to stay 2,000 feet or meters away from the ark? Is it right here? No, there's, one, there's another one that actually... Here it is. Oh. Jeff Vader. Uh, the people were told to follow the ark staying back 2,000 cubits, 3,000 feet, 1,000 yards, just over a half mile. Why so far? Well, one thing that we know from the Bible, the, the ark kills people who touch it. Uh, so that could be one reason. The other thing is, too, is anybody who's watching them, if the people themselves are staying away from it, again, you have an image, right? You're, you're, you're projecting an image of almost... Adam, adoration, uh, reverence, fear yeah. uh, of this thing. Like even its own people, except for the guys who are wearing funny clothes, by the way. Remember, they wore different clothes than everybody else. So these people wearing these different clothes who are carrying this thing and marching around it, they're different than everybody else. So was setting apart the holiness of it. Of exactly, and the reverence. I think that's the word I was really looking for. Is, is It demonstrates yeah. visually from any onlooker that there is definitely a special reverence, and it would make people be like, I ain't getting near that. They're not getting yeah. near that. What is that thing? Yeah. What it's, are they carrying? Exactly. I mean, they're, they're, all casualness was destroyed when Aaron's sons, you know, were burnt with fire yeah when they were messing around and, and not following the rules of the temple mm -hmm. so there's nothing casual about it and uh the fear of what this is the magnitude the holiness the power the every it, it all followed it all had to be part of the image of all of this is what i think we're saying yeah yeah um and also it glorifies god because yeah. god goes before them because the ark is definitely symbolic of yeah. the and, power of god and as Luis is saying you have to be holy and clean to be around it and exactly. if the people if, if somebody stepped too close to it mm -hmm. and they weren't holy and clean, they'd have to go flambe, potentially. That, that means catch on fire. Yeah, because God will not reside with this nation unless they remain holy. And right. he tells them this consistently. Right. Um, okay. Could you imagine seeing this thing? Let's go back in time, bro. Build that time machine. Oh, Gosh. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Great, Scott. Okay. We just sent you back to the future. I'm back. <laughs> Um, okay, continuing on, um, April Anglis in Joshua 5, 13, 14, and 15, do mm. you think that was Yeshua? No. Wait, I don't think we know. Well, well, so we're, there's clues later on in some of the other prophets of who this might have been in yes. this case, in this particular case. Um, but we could totally see how reading it now, it could be seen as possibly Yeshua. And even some scriptures in the New Testament, how you could link the two together. But as we continue reading, we probably will find some information of who this individual 
specifically is? There is one clue that comes before, so we can talk about that clue. Okay. In Exodus, I think, or maybe Leviticus, yeah. uh, Moses is told by God, tell the people yeah. that the angel that's going to come uh, later to lead them, do yeah. not do not mess with him the way you, you've messed with me. Exactly. Do not treat him the way you treat me. There is no uh, friendly banter with this yeah. guy. You don't you don't get to talk bad about him. Yeah. You don't get to deny you don't get to you don't get to mess around with him or, or, or It's almost as if God's saying, Listen, I I I'll I'll have a sense of humor and tolerance for you. But the, my captain I'm gonna send, he's a real he's a real hard Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah he's, he's, he's a real not, hard case. He's, he's not, not gonna, as funny as I am. Yeah. You know what's so awesome is God does show a demonstration of, of humor when he deals with Abram. Well, he's Abram, not Abraham yet, right? Yeah. Actually that's right where he made him Abraham. Yeah. Right. But the way he shows that he has a sense of humor is so awesome. Like I've always wondered before reading the Bible if God had a sense of humor. Like have you ever like made a joke and you thought like God was going to smite you because you're like, I don't know if God has a sense of humor. Like should I be super scared right now? But then you read what he did with Abraham and you're just like, oh my God, he's hilarious. Yeah. God is so funny. <laughs> I mean, look at my life. That's how you know God has a sense of humor. <laughs> but biblically speaking, these are moments where he says, don't, don't, don't mess around with him like you messed around with me. Yeah. And again, so, that's in prior chapters. Yeah. So we're allowed to point that one out, but yeah. there's more coming. So that's let's keep, let's let's keep reading. We'll, we'll find out more. Don't you love how it unravels? Uh, Tom God. Dawson's got another interesting comment. A okay. huge fact of the ark: it was covered in badger skins. Badger mm -hmm. skins were the most ragged and mangiest of animal skins, and mm -hmm. tough. They're like tough, really tough skin. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So much. So the angel was not Yahweh himself. No, not this time. No, we don't. We don't believe so. And uh, because he prophesies that an angel is coming, and he says, "Don't treat him like you treat me." Yeah. And then this guy shows up, and he seems to be. We don't. Yeah. There. And then later on, I mean, if the prophets are right, and if my memory is right, that they do say who it is. Yes. Because again, I'm, I may be pulling from a source that could be wrong. But, right. So put that in your pocket. But I believe later on they reveal who this warrior captain angel is. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Doreen asks, just so we don't leave people hanging who are just tuning in. Doreen asks, what's the Abraham joke? So here's a joke. You ready? Two guys walk into it. No, I'm just kidding. So this is the joke. Uh, God shows up in flesh and he's got two angels with him, right? And he's sitting there with, with Sarai and Abram, who at that moment becomes Sarah and Abraham. And he makes the promise to make them young. And then he says, I'm going over to Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm going to completely annihilate it. And, and Abraham goes, well, I got a cousin there or a nephew there or something like that. He's like, what if you should find somebody there like who's good? Maybe you won't smite everybody. And he goes, well, and he goes, what if you found 50 people who are good? Would you not smite it? And he goes, if I find 50 people, I won't smite it. And he goes, well, well what, if, what if you found 40? And he goes, all right, if I don't find 40, if I find 40 people, I won't smite it. Well, what about 30? 30, all right, all right. And then he gets all the way down, he keeps going. Like, he keeps going. God's like, eh, all right. And then he gets to 10, and he goes, what if you found 10? And he goes, if I find 10, I won't smite it. Now stop asking me, I gotta go. That's it. That's as far as we go down is 10. I'm leaving. Yeah. And it's hilarious, because it's like a very human moment where God actually kind of like gets a little like... He humors Abraham's... All like, the way down to he 10. He knows what Abraham wants, yeah. which is to save his his brother, his nephew, nephew and, and all his family. His family. Yeah, and he's just humoring him. And yeah, go, okay. And it, it, you could see how every time Abraham asks, he's like, "Oh, but please do not be mad." But maybe if this or that, it's just kind of funny. It's, it's funny, just funny scene. As as the term we will we will later read, he suffered a fool. But it's funny that he like draws a line and he's just like, "No more. You're not going any lower. I'm not saying yes to anything <laughs> and, lower and, than 10. And, and just <laughs> recently, yeah, just recently in uh, Deuteronomy, he eventually tells Moses, "Okay, don't ask me anymore." Yeah, that's really funny. Moses he's like, like, "Are you sure I can't see the promised land? Right. Are you sure? I mean, couldn't I just step foot in it for like a second? And he's like, "Moses, we talk about this all the time. You keep bringing. It. Listen, you got to stop bringing this up, bud. <laughs> it's so yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. it's not funny for Moses, but it's funny for us who are like." Yeah, you I mean, know, they're looking on. Yeah, it, yeah. Point is that... <laughs> Vice Versa says, love the concept needs to be a punchline, though. Well, the punchline is written better than what I did, okay? I don't know. I don't have it memorized. But God, there is a punchline, yeah. right? There's a punchline in it the way that God says it. It's, yeah. it's pretty funny. Yeah. Negotiations with God. Uh, laugh. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that in and of itself is kind of funny. It is. 
Wow. Yeah, he's sitting there negotiating with God, and God's like, "All right." And then he gets a ten. And he's just like, "No more." And he like, it's the way he does it, though. The way, the way that God says it is hilarious. Yeah. And then the same thing with Moses. It's the way he says to Moses, "Stop asking me." He asks me like every day, "Leave me alone." Right. This is gonna happen. You're not getting in. It doesn't sound funny when we say it, but it was funny how he worded it. Yeah, it's like yeah. you just go and read it. Trust me, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 funny to us. Maybe we're funny. Okay. Maybe we're demented. Who yeah. Knows? <laughs> um. Um. Okay, Marianne Costumus Suglis. Um, I hope I got that right. Joshua 5, 13, 15. Does this mean the prince of the army of Jehovah is Yeshua? Okay, we just talked about that. All yep. right. Angela Turner Anderson. In chap uh, chapter 5, all of the males were commanded to be circumcised. Why were they not doing this all along while Ooh. they were in the wilderness since they're supposed to be circumcised in their eighth day after birth? We thought the same thing. We were like, wait, hold the phone. Mm -hmm. All these dudes have not been circumcised on the eighth day? Mm -hmm. And then it explains. They had not been circumcised because uh, they were not following the commandments of God, which is why he had to keep them all out of the promised land. Does it say that? I mean, we, well, we, we, in the, we, in the story we understand that. Yeah, because he yeah. says they're not, they're not following my commandments, which right. is why they don't get to go in. Right. We understand. Yeah. But you're right. They should have been. Which is mind blowing. Could you imagine a day where whole every man got circumcised? Well, you know, actually, that's a bad day. You for know what? Actually, else. actually, it, this would be something that would be a little bit difficult to police because there was only so many Levites, and they were living around the temple. They were living around the tabernacle. That's true. There's not like there's a holiday where everybody shows their yeah, circumcision so, to each other to ver verify. Yeah. So those that did it must have. Ha they would have had to maybe have a Levite present, and maybe they would have had to write it down. Wait, 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 wait. But that you know, because if the Levite hadn't done it, they would know. There would be a record of. Like the Levites would know. They'd be like, "I never did him. Did you do him?" That's Did you true. snip so, his tippet? It wasn't me. What I'm saying is it doesn't sound like they created a record for these things. It right. doesn't sound like they were diligent about these things. This true. was just a commandment to each individual, and then the individuals didn't carry them out because, you know, it was a difficult commandment. Yeah. You know, the other thing is, too, is there's really only one person who could verify whether somebody was circumcised or not, which would be the wife of the guy. The wife or, yeah, or his parents. Or the parents, yeah. But the fathers are all dead. Yeah. Right. The fathers are all dead, so really the only people who would know would be the wives. The, the wives so if they're the not wives. married, they totally have the ability to to get by. Whether how they got to be this way, I guess we don't exactly know, but we know it did. And the fact is, they weren't circumcising like they were supposed to. And uh, God's reminding you got to be circumcised. You got to go get them to do this thing before we go, before I perform my miracles in Jericho. It's also probably really important too, considering they're about to go into like war, into battle, and God is like, okay, I'm going to protect my people. And the circumcision was the thing that was given to Abraham as if anybody gets circumcised, they are now a part of you. If somebody right. makes that move to do that event, they are a part of you. You don't have to be born blood wise into it. If you got circumcised, you became an official member of the tribe. That's true. So there's that too. Yeah, and and it says that he gave them time to recover after the circumcisions before they went on to battle in Jericho. Yeah, walking around a big old town circumcised would be not a good day. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. All right. Um, but hope bump. hope that takes care of that. We'll be here all day. <laughs> uh, Joshua six. <laughs> Verse, uh, vice versa, uh, Joshua six nineteen. Why does God want and care about gold and silver? Well, it plays a role. Yeah, it's going to play a role later. Yeah, there's actually going to be something that happens right after this that has mm -hmm. to do with that. But also the spiritual symbolism. Um, God is allowing the Israelites to prosper from the conquest, and. Um, the gold and the silver are being given to the treasury of essentially the temple or the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. So um, there's sometimes though that well, he gold says burn everything, silver. including the gold and the silver. Yeah, there's certain times where he says don't don't, don't even touch take it. it. Yeah, if, he says also. In fact, if you so much, he says don't touch this because whatever sin is on it, you will have that sin on you. And in this, he even says that too. He says, uh, don't so much as touch anything in Jericho except for these. 
because everything else, your sin will be on you, right? And yeah, Helen uh, is asking, uh-oh, we lost connection. What up? Oh. Okay, we just lost connection there for a second. Uh, Helen is asking, please, I still need clarity whether there is a difference between the Ark of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant, and the Ark of the Testimony. It's coming. We have that question. We're going to talk about it. Oh, we do? Oh, yeah, my yeah. bad. Okay. No worries. We haven't forgotten. It's just at the bottom with thematic thematic questions. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. No, you were saying that basically about the gold and the silver. Oh, so gold. So both gold and silver have very uh, uh, special spiritual properties, right? Uh, gold is, is untarnished. It doesn't tarnish, right? So that's yeah. the symbolism of gold that we understand. And then silver, when you, when you refine silver perfectly, it's a perfect mirror. Right? So the spiritual is the funny thing is, is God says he refines us like silver. Notice he doesn't say he refines us like gold, which we and all humans throughout history have always revered gold to be more precious and more valuable. So why would God choose a less valuable metal to, to be the one that he says he refines us like? Well, that's because when you refine silver to its perfection, you can't even see silver. It reflects so clearly you can't even see the color of silver. That's cool. Yeah. So those are the reasons why gold and silver have spiritual importance to God for us. Sorry. Don't be sorry. That's awesome. I'm kidding. Okay. Um, oh, bam. Um, Terry Cash. The reason why it was on the eighth day is because there is an increase of vitamin K that helps clot the blood. Yeah, is so great. Yeah, I've heard that. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Vice versa. They think I'm a troll. Who thinks you're a troll? Who thinks you're a troll? We think you're lovely. Yeah. We love your questions. We don't think you're a troll. We don't think you're a troll. Okay. Uh, now, Facebook might think we're all trolls, so that's okay. <laughs> Under we'll, the bridge. We'll all be lucky to be on Facebook in a year from now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Vice versa. Continuing on with your questions. Uh, Joshua 621. When it, when it says, utterly destroy, I take it means they killed everyone. But if the son is not responsible for the father's sin, why are even the children killed? Aren't they blameless? And why kill the animals as well? Seems like an overkill. <laughs> um, when people, when yeah. when a child, especially a male child, grows up to find out where they came from and what happened to their family, and especially what happened to their fathers in that day and age, they would definitely get revengeful, and they could be a bad seed, and they could absolutely, you know, start like a revival of the sins of the ways because they find the heritage. Like there's always some way of finding out where they came from. The other thing is too is that there is generational curses. So just because I know what you're saying for the the, the child doesn't necessarily take on the full responsibility for the father's sins as though they are the sinner, but the price of the sin goes the, down four generations. Four generations. Yeah. So so you you don't want to bring that into your camp. If you if 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 you come into a country that you're being given by God to take over and to have a perfect land, mm -hmm. a land without problems, yeah, and you find a culture that is 100% in sin and totally against God and worships weird things and sacrifices children, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. blasphemes him, and, and yada, yada. you smite the fathers of that entire culture and you leave the sons, what happens when they grow up? Do they become your friends? Do they suddenly turn to God Almighty and say, we are now going to be Israelites as well? Or do they plot revenge? And if they plot revenge and they come into their full growth as adults, what are they then? They're full grown warriors. Now you have, now the promise that, the God, that God made for them, which is, I will fight all your wars for you. Mm -hmm and I will keep you from having war, period, if you stay holy. Now that promise is in peril. And now you have to kill those guys. And if they had any children, you gotta, you gotta worry about those children. It's never, it's a never ending war. It is, it's really sad. So the Lord is saying, is giving, is telling them to do this so that the, that the war may be over. It's really grace because they're making sure that the sin doesn't spread onto other people. There's also another spiritual aspect, since I see this as the last comment, uh, I didn't want to take anybody's thunder away. The other thing to realize too here is that whenever there is sin, uh, especially if there's somebody's life or, or if there was any killing, we don't know what this, we don't know what the kingdom of Jericho did. We don't know what their sin was. It's not mentioned like Sodom and Gomorrah, which is actually really interesting that a lot of these other kingdoms, there's kind of a reference to sins they might do, but the only other places that really it's worship ball or the Moloch sacrificing the children in the fire. Other than that, there's really he really doesn't tell us exactly what the things were that that 
place did to deserve that, right? Right, another one, real quick. There's another one? Wait, uh, there's another on thought. this topic? Or? Yes, on this topic. Okay. So, everybody on earth right now are the children of Noah. Right. Noah was given commandments. Yes. Uh, there was, I believe, seven of them given. They're yes. very close to the Ten Commandments the Jews were given. But they're a little bit, they're missing some of the holy laws. Yeah, they're a little bit more organic, like follow your heart-ish kind of no but there God. was, But there was definitely no murder. There right. was no adultery. There was no uh, uh, um, eating of uh, live animals or their mm. parts and things like that. So, yeah. uh, and have a system of laws and justice. Now... Jericho could have been run by a, a whatever I say rules king, no system of laws and justice. Right. Um, various other Noah's law, Noah Noah hide laws that were completely disregarded, and so this is the punishment. This is the the making. This is the justice for these people having walked away from Noah's laws. Yep. Now we forget though. It about seems them. so far removed it because of the so far time, removed. but they're not. They're all cousins. And brother, like exactly, they're all related. Every single one of these tribes and and countries and nations are all all Egyptians. If are, the pre-flood are, people did not receive grace, right? Except for Noah, who was just and righteous. Mm -hmm. If all of the pre-flood people were destroyed in the flood, mm -hmm. why should any nation from that point on that sins terribly and without without regard? Um, now that they know the laws, especially because Noah was given those laws, yeah, because he was their grandfather. He was their grandfather. So, why would any? Why should any of those nations be afforded a greater, uh, a greater necessarily grace? Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, basically, God is creating a flood onto Jericho without flooding the earth and destroying everybody. Right, and that was the point I was getting to yes. too. Is that the, that God Himself says that blood must be spilt in order to make it right with the earth. So again. He floods the earth because the blood and the sin had gotten so bad, he had to wash it clean with his own hand. He creates a rainbow and he says, this rainbow, this symbol in the sky is a symbol that I will never flood the earth again as I have today. From now on, I will point my punishment onto myself. Now remember, all the children from Noah are like God's chosen people. So when God takes some of his people and sends them into a land and they smite them, and he spills their blood onto the land, we also know that there is a balancing spiritually on the land that must have been done. We don't know why, but that must be the reason why their blood must be spilled. And on top of that, these are also God's children. They've, they've removed themselves. So again, the punishment is not just on the people, but even on to right. God himself, because he loves them. They're of the same bloodline. They're of the same family, right? They just didn't stay on course. So you have to also imagine a brokenhearted father who, who realizes, uh, it's so sad to see so many of my children, only this small tribe, and the whole rest of the world has just like gone away from me and started practicing false gods and, and other teachings. And they, and and they, they like have that. no memory. They've kept none of the traditions, none, none of the stories. They've all made up their new, new gods or whatever they've done. And what's also so crazy <sighs> is they're aware of Jehovah. They're, they're walking around the desert for 40 years. They end up coming to the point where they're prepping to get into the Holy Land. They're destroying entire nations and kingdoms. And all the other kingdoms of around aren't repenting. dropping to their knees and repenting immediately. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's no way they don't know they're all related to Noah, right? I mean, so it's just crazy to me is like thinking to myself, like, how in the world are they not like, we need to like worship their God. I mean, though, you'll go into any town at this point in the world and you'll worship whatever God is there. You'll go into any temple, make a donation for any kind of blessing, right? It's, it's just paganism, right? So, but the one thing these people didn't seem to do is they didn't bow down and worship Jehovah God, right? The, which was demonstrating power. My mind's blown. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's yeah, a it's a they, weird thing for me to look at that part of the Bible and think like, how did these people if not the, like? If these people didn't have a memory of Noah, right? That means that there has been a definite, um, like a blocking definite breakage of the commandment of honoring thy father and thy mother, right? Noah was the grandfather of all these people. They should have kept in mind all the things he taught them. They should have followed in his ways. Of course, they didn't. The only one that seemed to have, the only group that seemed to were whatever, the group that brought Abraham and Abraham himself and etc. And now God made a new covenant with Abraham's children. He basically, you could say, started over. But yes, what Nathan's saying is 100% true, I believe. Finally. 
<laughs> no, uh, when you're saying about God, God not rejoicing. Yeah, he's not rejoicing killing of him. these. It's, it is not a happy revenge. No, he is sorrowful of the fact that this has to happen. And later on, as we know, because we know, he will do something to redeem them, right. all of these people. Right. Um, but which is awesome for the purposes of the blessings of of Israel, who are going to be the ones from whom the Messiah will come, which is prophesied already. Yeah. Um, this must be done. Yeah. It's it very not sad. A, it is not a happy thing for God. And I don't think the Jews were like, when they were watching, going around Jericho and going in and killing these people and these babies, I don't think that, that it was like a happy day for them. You know what I mean? And we actually, you know, we might read later on about how actually this disturbs them. We might, we might actually see these people get to the point where psychologically they have post-traumatic stress disorder. We might. Wink, wink, nod, nod. We might. Yeah. Interesting um, stuff, though. It is heavy. It is heavy. And, and it's sad, too, because, you know, not that you guys need to hear this because we're preaching to the choir here. We know that. But if there's anybody watching who's just tuning in who's like a non-believer, we know that the world is teaching that the God of the Bible is this just really mean, smitey... I don't like these people go and just kill them and they're they that you know the news or any kind of person who 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 just quotes these moments they don't quote the moment that they were all from the same grandfather they don't quote the moment they were family they don't quote the moment that the people doing the killing get post-traumatic stress disorder they none of this is mentioned so it's just like this total monstrous behavior and that's just not the and not only that they never mention how many times God reached out and tried to bring them back how many times he gave them opportunities to come back to him and how he said, if you will come back to me at any time, as many times, as long as you come back, I'll take you. They never quote that part. Yeah. And even in the moment of their death, these people did not repent and bring themselves down, you know, to, yeah. to worship the they God. They had been given over so much Completely. to their sin that they couldn't even, I, I mean... Just hearing about, oh, they parted the river and three, th three million people came through? Yeah. That should have been enough for somebody to wave the white flag and go, we're going to go talk to them and beg that they don't destroy us and, and, and know, want to know about their God. What is this wonderful thing you do? And think about this. Rahab says this. Everybody in this kingdom knows of your God and knows of the miracles. And think about this. God had them march six days. And on the seventh day, they marched seven times. How much more time do, did That's he give true. them to repent? Very true. Very good. He's like, hey, we're here. Okay, we'll be back tomorrow. Hey, we're here. Okay, we'll be back tomorrow. Hey, we're here. Okay, final day. Seventh day. Hey, we're here. Seven times. We're going around you. Seven times. You sure is you this, don't want to have this is, this the is, last moment to uh, is, repent? Mic Do I get drop. a mic drop on this one? Mic drop. Was it a, a, a silly <laughs> ritual? of? I don't want to say silly. Forgive me. Was it a ritual of seven for the sevens, or was it infinite grace? Seven graces being given upon the people of Jericho to awaken from their sin. And repent. Open their gates and say, forgive us. What is it you seek? We are, we are, we, we, we surrender. Because Surrender to your God. God says, if they surrender to you, let them live. Let them live. Let, let them be blessed, right? They don't. Irina KD, it seems though the history so far that Jehovah keeps trying to show and show and show us the people each time how to obey, how to behave to the fully thriving with him, within him. And we just screw it up and pretend knowing better. It must be depressing for him. Yes. Yeah, exactly. The creator of the universe is trying, is calling you on the phone and you're like, ah, I'm busy right now. I don't feel like talking. You guys. The creator this, of the universe. This right here, this right here is one of the number one reasons why I tell people to read the Bible for themselves. By the time you get to Joshua, you see that the God of the Old Testament is Yeshua. He has the same heart as Yeshua. He has the same love as Yeshua. He has the same slow to anger over how many thousand years now? To anger, right? Like he gives them so many chances and he shows them so much love that here at Jericho, he gives them a seven-day warning to where they're blowing trumpets. What is a trumpet? A trumpet. What is a horn blowing? It's a warning. Mm -hmm. It's a, hey, I'm here. Still nothing. And they even admit that they know his power. 
Yeah, and he, his destruction. That's very true. He didn't say walk quietly at night around right. the castle so or around the walls so they don't see you and right. shoot you with arrows. No, he said go during the day with a loud. Yeah, unbelievable. So, yeah, I, and again, I just we don't hear that kind of stuff talked about. But now you guys know because you read it. So when you come across somebody who says that the God of the Old Testament is an evil, vengeful, just kill people for no good reason God, you have the knowledge in your heart, in your head, and in your heart where you can tell people, no, nah, you got it's it wrong. True. That's not that's not the God of the Bible at all. He showed them so much grace. He gave them so much love and opportunity for his blessings to come on them, and then they pissed on him. That's Amen. the truth of it. Yep. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Let's finish this up. You guys are awesome. Thematic questions here. Helen, this is the question you asked before. Mm -hmm. uh, why is the Ark of the Lord, Ark of the Testimony, and Ark of the Covenant called differently? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe they're obviously talking all about the same object. Yeah, because those things are in it. The testimony yes. is in the Ark. The Covenant is in the Ark. And it is the Ark of the Lord because it's the seat in which the Lord sits on. That's so, right. so the container, if you guys don't know, the container that you, that you would know is the Ark with the gold lid and the angel wings touching each other, that kind of thing. That is actually designed as a seat. So it's a back seat that the Lord would sit on and that would, the wings would basically, he, he'd put his back. Now he actually physically doesn't sit like a human with a butt and legs and things like that. He, it's a ball of light, but he, he does it on top of the seat that is the top of the ark. And underneath him, there's some symbolism right here, you guys. This is pretty amazing. You ready for this? Underneath him is the testimony, and underneath him is the ark of the covenant, his promise etched in stone, right? We even that's where this that's where the saying, yeah, his commandments, but but that's the ark of the covenant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the uh yeah, we have the saying today. It's not etched in stone, but it hasn't been, it's not like it's written in stone. Well, that comes from this. Right. If it's written in stone, it's not going anywhere is the point, right? right. And so um, also remember too that a staff was a testimony right. because a person Decided. carved their moments in a staff. They were like hieroglyphs and they would carve like uh, the story of their life or their experience on a staff. So for instance, Moses' staff would have literally been uh, like a scroll. It's like the telling in hieroglyphs of his life moments and the things that happened with that staff in hand. So that's why we will see later when somebody, Yeshua, sits on a throne, what's underneath him? What's at his feet? These are all symbolic to what we're seeing here with the ark. So yeah, they're all, it's all the same. But it, the reason why they mention it in that way, to answer your question earlier, Helen, is that uh, he's referring to the relationship of what's in the ark. And he, whenever they use it, like for instance, if they say the ark of the testimony, it's because he's emphasizing that the testimony is the moment of the conversation. If he says it's the ark of the covenant, right, then it's because he's emphasizing the covenant. But it's all the same, it's all inside the same container, if you will. Good, good question. Good question. Okay, so Sandy Vickers is asking a good question. I was curious as to how the two spies cross the Jordan and come back across. What? Oh, okay, before we cover that question, Sandy, let's cover, because we were just talking about this. Vice versa is asking, I get a child will rebel, but will an animal? Um, mm, that's a good question, Vice that's versa. That's a very good question. So, that, that we don't have, we, well, yeah, we do because we what do. Do, what do you do when you sin? What do you do when you sin? You transfer that sin onto an animal, and then you you kill the animal, and the animal's blood comes on the earth. And specifically, God said the animal's blood atones for the sin. Right. And so here He says, kill all the animals in this land. So not only is the human blood atoning for the sin, but this the and cleaning, but the animal's blood would make sense that it's part of the atonement. Okay. Because I'll, that's I'll what he does that. in that's what he does in the temple. Yes. But I think again, he's just also showing the absolution of his clean, clean cleanliness. That he's like absolutely new start, get rid of everything that that resembled anything. Because he of the is going to allow them to live in this Jericho, right? right. Or was the city no, they burnt? Hmm. It does crumble the ground, but it gets rebuilt. Remember? It was. Oh, but it's not supposed to it's be. It's not rebuilt. supposed to be. Rebuilt. Okay, so yes. it is burnt. It's entirely burnt. Everything is wiped off yeah. there. Sorry, we're kind of giving you Easter um, eggs here, but yeah, yeah, it's 
I think it's another way of God just cleansing 100%. You know, God doesn't want 99% of your heart or 98% or even 75%, right? Especially. He wants 100% of your cleanliness. He wants 100% of your commitment and your submission to him. So, bam. Yeah, and again, you know, spiritual energy, if sins can be transferred onto objects, how much more can they be transferred onto animals that are owned by these by these sinners? Exactly. And if there's plus sin- you don't know if they did because we know well, Nathan knows because of voodoo and other stuff that he meddled with a long time ago in another life that you do transfer stuff onto animals for all sorts of reasons that I won't get into tonight. But yeah, so that there so very there well could be that. things like that. And there would be no way of knowing which animal had the transfer onto it. Yeah. Wow, that's kind of interesting that that even plays into my understanding now that I have that background. Anyways, weird. Mm, pretty cool. Some shamanistic stuff here being uh, definitely described. Weird. Um, how many times, Antonio, uh, how many times are we allowed to sin? Will Jesus' blood cover us knowing that we are sinning? Sinking. Sinning. Thinking and sinning. Sinning. Okay. sinning. This is a good question, Antonio, but it, there can't really be an answer to that because Paul actually addresses this uh, in the New Testament. He says, so what then do we do, those of us who are saved and come into the truth? Do we continue to sin and go, oh, but by the glory of Yeshua, and look at how wonderful Yeshua is that he covered my sins again? And it was almost to give more glory to Yeshua that we continue to sin? And Paul says, no, you know, no not at all. That's, that's not the way to be. Uh, it, the thing is, is that when it comes to how many times do we sin, it's not so many, it's not so much about the number of times we sin, it's more about our heart about it. Because if our heart has grown cold to our sins, the body, the Bible later describes, and we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but the Bible in the New Testament describes how God has given us over to those sins. When God finally gives you over to your sins and you're no longer convicted about the sins that you are committing, you are in what we would call the danger zone. That is a bad place to be. So it's not a number for some people because some people could do that once or twice and immediately get back into their sinful ways. Other people, it could be a hundred times. So there's not like a biblical, you know, on the 77th time of your sin, the Lord shall doom you. Like that's, it's not written anywhere like that. It's, It's a matter of if you aren't fighting the good fight, if you're not really trying to fight against your sins, then that's when God's like, man, I, I don't know what to do with you. You're not, you're not submitting to me. And, uh, and it's more about that. And that will all be described in the New Testament. So I know you're asking about that now, but yeah. I hope that makes sense since I can't really go into it. Read, um, read the New Testament. I think... Yeah, just read the whole New Testament. <laughs> I'm not going to pinpoint one because the whole thing is important. So, yeah. Hopefully it helps you, brother. Okay. Um, Sandy Vickers, I was curious as to how the two spies crossed the Jordan and came back across. Doesn't say, does it? I was curious two spies, spies that two spies the, crossed the, the Jordan and came back across. Well, they could have taken a boat. But three point something million people couldn't have just taken a boat. But it doesn't say. Right. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. No, it will never explain, actually, how yeah. they got back across. But wait, there's actually a whole tribe that goes back. Two tribes. Three tribes. Do I remember? They're on the other side of the Jordan. Yeah. Maybe he did cross it. Maybe he did part it for maybe, a week. Maybe he it doesn't say, it. though. It doesn't say. Maybe he parted it not for the spies, but for the... Well, who knows? We'll get to it yeah. if it says. Also, the other thing is, too, is there might have been a bridge. But if you are coming across to attack people and they know you're coming to attack, the last thing you want to do is have your people caught on a bridge. That's a bad day. That's an easy attack. Because you, you're, you're bottlenecking all your people into a very easy attack That's zone. That's true. So strategically speaking, like war-wise, crossing a bridge is very dangerous. It's possible that there was a crossing point. Yeah, a bridge there must have been because how water. did everybody get across? Well, yeah, exactly, for commerce, etc. Yeah. So there must have been a crossing point, but that point was guarded. Right. And two people could get across because they're not coming as a threat. They, as far as they know, they're coming as traders or buyers or you know, right. nomads. Just because they were two people coming, they weren't like, oh, two people are coming. Let's kill them. Who are they? No, like, it's only when you came battle ready were they like, oh, put up the gate. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I see a lot of people are answering the sin question. Yeah, amen. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Helen, I think sin is more 
of intention of your heart. There you go. Yeah, until he returns. Yep. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Marthangel? <clears throat> Marthangel? Angel? Marthangel, Marshall Angel. Wow. Love my Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Me too. Mike Jones. Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Carolyn Pressera Wilson. Thank you so much, Jesus, for every little thing. Every little thing. Amen. For the air we breathe and the sun that shines and the stars that sparkle and testify your glory. Hallelujah. All right, you guys. Hey, you guys. Seriously, we could not have done this video without you. This was one of my, my bad days. I just was in a funk. But I was having so much fun because anytime we read the Lord, it just never returns void. I felt the joy coming from you, so really? I felt no funk. You got some? I felt nothing but joy. You got some of my joy on you? Joy though? of the Lord and the joy of the Lord's work. Or reading the Lord's word. Amen. Hallelujah. I love the Lord's. Are you guys, are you as excited to read the Bible as I are? I mean, are, I, do you not absolutely just get like filled with like excitement when you read the Bible? Me and Alex do. We do. I mean, it, we really a, do. It's a special night for us. Yeah. For sure. And when we, when we, um, <clears throat> And when we don't, when, we're, when, when, when like when we miss one of those weeks because we're traveling or we're not together or something like that, we both get in like a funk. Yeah. Like we get like a spiritual. Meh. Are you guys? Do you guys get that too? I like that. You like my man? I get in that. I, I feel it for sure. So it looks like your back is better. My back is better. It still hurts, but uh, but uh, yeah, I uh, I can at least move and I can at least sit in the chair and the Lord is good. So. Praise the Lord, it is getting better. It's the slowest healing process I've ever had in my life. I think my kidney stone healed faster than this. Yeah, but I am blessed because the Lord has given me some healing here. So, hallelujah. Thank you guys for your prayers, by the way, on that. All right, you guys, one more time. If you did not post a picture on hashtag be the light, you didn't miss it. Some people go, oh, I missed it. No, you didn't. You could post today. You could post tomorrow. You could post any day you want of you holding a candle saying, I stand in unity with my brothers and sisters all around the world. So remember to go to hashtag be the light group page. Thank you guys very much. Next week is going to be the next six chapters of Joshua. Uh, it's 24 chapters. Next week. <sighs> Alexis. I confess I'm traveling next week, going to New York to see my brother. Okay, so we'll do a Q&A. You guys will have to put up with another Q&A with me. I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. I'll try to, I'll try to get a good night's rest so that I'm, I'm useful to you, though, so that we can have prayer sessions, Luis, too. Luis wants to end this in a prayer today. Let's end prayer. Okay. Go ahead, Luis. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just joshing you. Just Joshua and you. You like that? See what I said? Joshua. Okay. okay. Joshua and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? We can end with a prayer. Joshua and you. All right, if you guys will join us in prayer, we'll end with a prayer, hallelujah, especially since it was a silly day for me, so at least I can pray, hopefully, God, Spirit come in. Almighty Jehovah, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I lift up my brothers and sisters who are watching this video live, participating with us in this entire Bible read-through. I thank you, Lord, that you have put it on our hearts to do this, but also, and more importantly, Lord, I thank you that you are here and present in this entire Bible read-through, not with just me and Alex, but with everybody. I thank you, Lord, for the minds and the spirit and the love and just the, the wisdom that you are pouring out of the fellowship of Yeshua Network. The people here and the fellowship here, Lord, is really a blessing. And uh, this feels so real. The Bible just seems so real, Lord. And, and so uh, you are so alive in spirit with us. And so I'm starting this prayer off, Lord, with thanks. First and foremost, I personally thank you for this day. I thank you for this process. I thank you for the growth and the spirit-filledness and, and the blessings that you just rain down through this. And I thank you, Lord, too, that you've made this fun. So many people are intimidated by the Bible and overwhelmed by the Bible, but I don't feel any overwhelming spirit here. I just feel joy and growth. Hallelujah. I also thank you, Lord, for the people who gave us the Bible, the people who endured the reality and the tough life, living in the tough times, and they documented it and followed your will, uh, at least to the degree that you, you brought us the truth. Lord, without the Bible, we would all be lost. And without their sacrifice and their testimonies and their covenants with you, we'd all be lost. So, Lord, I just ask that you bless every soul that has ever lived, that has ever especially walked with you and praised you and, and remained your child. Bless their souls, Lord. And thank you for this blessed day, a day you have made and that we get to rejoice. 
and continue to be with my brothers and sisters as we continue to read. And as they go out today, after this entire Bible read through uh, series or video today, Lord, may you stay with them. May their thoughts stay on you. And may they continue to meditate on you today, Lord, and continue to praise you and fellowship with the people in their life or the people around them that they come in contact with, testifying that you are a good God of the Old Testament and the New Testament, one of grace, love, and mercy. In Yeshua's holy name, I give you thanks and I give you praise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anything to add, brother? No, that was fantastic. All right. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Be blessed, be the blessing, be the light. I'm Nathan Wheeler. I'm Alex Lovovsky. We are Yeshua Network with you fine folks, and we will see you soon. And I'm thinking too, based upon a lot of the things that have been going on lately, um, I also want to do someday in the in the near future, maybe even as early as tomorrow, I want to do a live Q&A. So keep tuned here at Yeshua Network. And I want to, the reason I want to do this Q&A though is I want to do prayer. I actually just want to do like a video that focuses on prayer uh, because I know a lot of you need prayer right now. I've been getting the emails and the comments. So I just want you to know instead of me just replying to a whole bunch of emails, we'll get on a live video and we'll do a, a live prayer session. Because the last time we did that, wow, the Holy Spirit really just did some amazing things. Amen. All right, guys, stay tuned for that. We will see you soon.